So it's finally time to talk about Mashiku Tensei Season 2 in its entirety, not just fragments of the season, not specific arcs, but the entirety of the season, because we've had the final episode finally come out, and I think it is fair to now talk about the entire journey. And honestly, I love it. I absolutely loved from start to finish. Yes, there were some issues, especially in the early stages, to do with certain things that were done in specific ways, especially like episode zero, some of the stuff to do with volume seven. I, I mean, I still remember when season two was announced and there were certain channels claiming that volume seven would never be covered. And it was just like, why? And they were like, oh, well, it's not in the web novel and it's not in the manga. And it's like, yeah, but this follows the light novel. So I still remember that drama. And honestly, it was hilarious to see some of those channels say what they said and then look like absolutely clown shows afterwards. And even with all the controversy about everything that's played out, it's honestly been entertaining to see play out. I never really put much emotion like, or care really into it too much other than just more the discussion. The care in the sense of it getting me, like, thinking that the show was worse because of it, because I, I understand in my mind what the show is always trying to get across is, is the human nature of all those things. And I don't want to harp on for the six millionth time about human nature, flaws, and all the rest, but I feel like this season executed that and continued to execute it from season one onwards. And all the little Easter eggs are so much at the final episode to hint at what is to come in season three which has been confirmed i talk about my speculation on when that comes out on the news channel but i think the overall if if you want the too long don't care didn't read kind of thing i feel like this was perfect i f feel like this season was as good as you could get i would give it a nine out of ten not a 10 out of 10, because there are definitely some areas in the season that could have been done better, but overall, I feel like it was a very well done story. The thing is, is that some people don't like certain arcs for different reasons based on taste, but Mishuku Tensei has never been about a one fixed location, and I've mentioned that in previous videos, that Mishuku Tensei is about a journey from the very start to all the way to the end, and I really love that about Mishuku Tensei. And so, yeah, naturally, Rudy is going to go from location to location to location. And that is going to be potentially a thing that will continue to happen. In what capacity? Well, you'll just have to wait and see, unless you want the light novel reviews. And then, of course, you've come to the right channel, because I have those on the channel as well. So I feel like as far as all that goes, that was done super well. The thing to discuss, really, that, again, gets me kind of all giddy, because I love having these debates, is... The whole relationship component with Rudy, mistakes, redemption, did he face consequences? And this is something that I've had a discussion with Ed, also known as Psychologist, who does psych psychological analysis on character development and talking about how sex can heal. And that is something that I've seen a lot of people attack him over saying, no, no, that's not real, you're just making that up. But no, it is. That is a part of our life. It is a part of how we grow as individuals. It's not the only component. And that's the thing. I think some people take what he says and say that, like, try and twist it and be like, oh, well, he's saying that, and so he must mean everything. It's like, no, but it's a component of life itself. And it definitely does impact on how we heal as individuals. And seeing Rudy go through the highs and the lows is definitely something that I've always found quite enjoyable from a consumer and just watching it all play out, especially when he goes through his ED phase. And that's another thing that was a potential, well, was a hot topic, was him going through the ED and a lot of people mocking Rudy for it, which proves also just how men's mental health has is seen as like a, oh, well, men aren't allowed to go through depression or mental health issues or have ED problems. And this is an issue that I think is very large. And Mushuku Tensei really proves how faulty culture is when it comes to men because it really just shows that if you know if if an anime has this and people are mocking a character for having it then imagine what would happen if a real human being a real male had this issue they would be getting ridiculed for it and i think Mashuka Tensei did a really good job on educating people on what ED is 
And that's why I loved having those discussions with Ed because we got to delve into it in a much more deeper level of discussing about how it impacts an individual, how these kinds of traumas can happen and how do you overcome them. And Mashuku Tensei did a great job at that particular arc. And I think that's the thing that I find the most interesting about Mashuku Tensei is, as I said, the human element, but the different traumas, the different psychological components, and doing collaborations with Ed has made me appreciate that even more on a deeper level. So if people want to clip that and send that to Ed, I do. I really appreciate what he's brought to the community in educating people on that and having those discussions about those has been really insightful and knowledgeable and it's allowed me to see things in a much more wider scope. Of course, you can know the basics about psychology from little bits and pieces that you can read or glean from online, but having a deeper, better understanding and a grasp of the whole situation is something that I've really enjoyed about Mishuka Tensei, and I'm very much looking forward to that to continue in not just other animes, but also season three as well for Mishuka Tensei. And then in the later parts, when you go over Paul's death and how that impacts Rudy, Rudy sleeping with Roxy and the relationship between him and Roxy, him and Sylvia, Sylvia and Roxy, and how that develops. And then also Norn, Aisha, Lilia, Paul, all these characters that honestly are just flowing through my head so quickly. They all have so many different things going on and you can glean and learn so much about how they interact with different situations going on and you feel like you can connect to them. Like it, This is the thing. I, I like the realisticness in it, but also the mystical, magical fantasy world as well. It, it has a good balance of unrealisticness and realisticness. I like the realisticness in the human aspect, the way that we deal with things going on in the world, but also the unrealistic aspect aspects of the magic, the worlds, the dungeons, the dragons, all those kinds of things going on. And I think it blends it very, very, very well. And season two did a great job at adapting it yes there was room for improvement yes they did stumble on some things in my humble opinion and this is just an opinion i'm not stating it as a fact but i do think overall the experience was very much amazing and well done and i couldn't have asked for anything honestly better and i very much am looking forward to season three because if season two Minus some of those mistakes at the end, at the start, I think if it stuck to what most of the anime was about, I think we'd be in good hands. I don't like doing the whole comparison of season one versus season two because this is the problem, and I've learned this over the years as someone that's played a lot of different games that have had a long lifespan. I know some people say, well, what does this have to do with gaming? Something like World of Warcraft. I know this is an interesting parallel to use to. I played World of Warcraft back in vanilla. So I knew, I know the highs and the lows for World of Warcraft, and one of the things that a lot of people do is they look, and as we we call this, looking through things in rose-tinted glasses. And I feel like anime fans do this, and Mushoku Tensei fans do this, when it comes to Season 1 and Season 2. And I think it's going to happen with Season 3 as well, where fans will see Season 3 and they'll go, oh, Season 2 was better, and Season 1 was... And they look for it through that lens of what the past was and kind of put it on a pedestal that's unrealistic. Did season one have problems? Yeah, it actually did. There are definitely some weird choppy moments in it that definitely were weird, memeable, funny, but the over experience of season one was absolutely beautiful and amazing and well done. It's the same with season two. There are highs and lows. Some things are better, some things are worse, but I think overall, if I look at season one and two, I think Combining it together, it's been an amazing journey. I don't really like comparing season one and season two because I just don't think it offers any value on an analysis and from a review perspective because really, at the end of the day, you're going to have highs and lows throughout things. If at the end of the day, if you wanted to compare season one and season two, you could turn around and compare core one and core two for each of the different individual seasons. Then you could turn around and compare each individual episode. But people don't so much do that. They compare seasons because it seems to just blend well. And I feel like that's going to be a problem when season three comes along. People are going to start bashing on season two and go, oh, well, I hope season three is better than season two. But then when season three comes out, they'll probably say season two is better anyway. And so it will just be that constant need to downplay and kind of, 
as I like to say, dooming. And that, that happened during season two. A lot of those people doomed and doomed and doomed, and they very quickly moved on once they realized their two minutes of attention disappeared, and they went on to the next thing they wanted to whinge about. I still remember it very vividly in my head, those people constantly on, to the point where even on some Discord servers, they just got muted like, permanently muted for the whole court, like, for the whole season, like, part one and part two, they just got muted, because people were just tired of listening to people just trying to force negativity in everyone's face, and at the end of the day, it's no different, I'm just an individual, you come to my channel to just get my opinion, but you shouldn't put my opinion on a pedestal and think, well, if that person says this, well, then I have to think that, at the end of the day, if you hated Mishoku Tensei, that's fine, that's perfectly fine, but how I feel and how it impacted me is a different experience, and I think that's something also people need to remember, but I also think if you hated season one of Mushoku Tensei because of what the story is about with Rudy, I think watching season two is just ma masochism at that point, and I think you should have just moved on. So if you watched all of season one and season two, and you hated it from the very beginning, I feel at that point you're either a masochist or you're deliberately watching it so that you have something to whinge about. And there are many anti-tubers that do that, and at the end of the day, I don't have so much respect. Again, I don't see an issue from watching something and then reviewing it, but if you're going to continue from that point onward, if you really truly despise it, you're not really helping anyone. All you're doing is just being extremely toxic it's just at that, at that point i'm just kind of like there's only so much you got to keep pushing it's like imagine if you watched all 1000 episodes of one piece and you hated the first 100 episodes you forced yourself through 100 episodes of one piece and you said i hate this this is trash and then went oh by the way i'm going to review the next go through the next 200 and say that's trash as well and then the next hundred and the next and the next and the next and the next and the reason why I use that as an example is because of how long-winded it is you're forcing yourself deliberately to go through something that you hate just so you can whinge at that point you should just move on go do something else there's plenty of other shows out there to watch I know I see the whole isekai you know is too oversaturated but that is just misleading and I'm sorry if people from certain other big channels like <clears throat> trust toast perpetuate that argument but that is just factually incorrect isekais are not as big as you think they are it's just very easy to label things as that but there's a good broad stroke of many different other series out there and you can watch many things so overall i think mishuku tensei season two was an absolute spectacle an absolutely amazing experience a nine out of ten i don't really like rating things but Ed was asking me of my opinions on the episodes, and I kind of thought about it a little bit. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. But I wouldn't really put much of a pedestal on that because I could end up contradicting myself with that rating. So take it with a grain of salt. I just want to be very clear on that disclaimer. But I think if you can glean anything out of it, I think it's in that high S tier where it was extremely well done, it had its flaws, but the over experience was extremely satisfying and it felt very good. And they focused on the things that needed to be focused on. Yes, there is cut content, but it's not cutting stuff that was critical to the overall growth and development of everything going on. So I think they did a, a beautiful job on that and I hope they continue that for season three. As far as Eris goes, because of course that was teased at the last episode, at the end, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I've heard rumors and claims and all that kind of stuff that there's going to be an OVA over Eris. I don't know if that's going to turn out to be true or if they save it for season three. We will just have to wait and see. But I do hope there is an OVA. But either way, we'll find out at a later point and there's no point stressing or losing any sleep over it. So... This is the thing I want to ask. What did you feel about season two? What impacted you in this season? What really struck a note at you? Where, where did you get through the season? You go, wow, this is a really emotional scene. Is it the beginning where Rudy's going through his ED? Is it the, the revelation of who Fitz is or Paul's death or a very of different other things going on. Maybe it's maybe Ellen and Lisa and a cliff getting it on, getting in a relationship and you finally feel like there's some hope for you as that bottom dwelling weird nerd in the corner and you might finally have a chance to pick up some hot 250 year old elf down the street. I mean, maybe it opens up some doors. What struck a chord with you 
as a fan through season two? What really resonated with you? I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As far as me and my opinion on that, I think I really do love the revelation between Fitz and Rudy. It's the one section I've read the most and reread the most because I just thought the relationship between them was so touching because you see Rudy at his lowest. He's scared, he's timid, he's unsure of things. He's just kind of like wishy-washy push over and him slowly building this relationship with someone else unknown to him, but actually he does know who they are and them coming together again and then, well, Rudy, in a sense, falling in love with someone that he has no idea who they really are and fits pushing themselves to finally confess who they are and their feelings and them coming together that was such a beautiful scene and i really love it even though people rat on it based on get it right <laughs> but those people that hate it on that arc because it's a university arc it's boring i love the i've loved the university arc i saw so many people saying season two should skip that worst idea it would have destroyed the anime if it skipped the university arc but i think the university arc is such a pivotal and amazing moment in rudy's journey and i really 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 loved it and it's the one scene that stuck out the most to me so far throughout seasons one and two it's just yeah i, I don't know there's something that i just really love about it that kind of I guess for me, I've always been a bit of a lover of romance animes and seeing it kind of in Mashuka Tensei in that fashion kind of feels like a short form of like a romance anime, like two individuals coming together, slowly building a relationship and then confessing and then getting together. And the great part about it is that you actually get to see the aftermath of that throughout the second core. And then, of course, the situation with Paul and him dying by saving Rudy, that is another thing that really hit so hard. And I mentioned in another video, especially it being on Father's Day, that you should cherish the moments that you have with your family. As someone that's just recently lost my mother, it really... I, I knew this, this was going to be a very hard-hitting episode for me, and it was because it makes you really understand that those fleeting moments are very precious. And it's something that you've got to kind of really cherish, cherish with everything that you can. I'm, I'm kind of moving my hands around and trying to articulate myself in that because this part of the story really shows Paul in a very different light. You see from the kind of scoundrel kind of mindset in the early stages where he sleeps with another woman, and he takes on those responsibilities, and then as time goes on and on and on and on and on, he makes these mistakes. He does things that shouldn't have done. He lashes out against his son, but then he pulls himself out of that, and he's there when he needs to be there. Sure, he's made mistakes. He's not perfect, but when push came to shove in the final moments, he gave his all, and he was willing and did sacrifice his life to protect his family and to protect Rudy and that little smile at the end really shows that even though it is sad that Paul passed away I think Paul felt satisfied that he did his duty as a father and that was the best and the thing that he could ask the most of doing what he needed to do to bring his family back together and where Zenith goes from there you're just going to have to wait and see unless you're a light novel reader or unless you want to go check out my light novel reviews self-plugging again I just think everything, when you put it all together, did such a beautiful, beautiful job. And there are so many other little things as well throughout the season that you could talk about, that you could analyze. Nana Hoshi. Nana Hoshi is a very interesting character. Orsted's connection to that kind of situation. Then you look at the girls, the cat and the dog girl, the beast girls, or whatever you want to call them. Those two and their delinquent tendencies. Then you've also got Fitz's relationship with, of course, the two individuals that have been with her throughout this whole situation and the royalty and the power struggles and all the political maneuvering and what is potentially to come with them as well. So I've got to play dumb with this kind of stuff because this is a non-spoiler video. And so there's all those little things as well. And then the relationship between Rudy and Eris still plays a part in this season with Rujit also turning up as well. So there's so many other little things. There's major things, small things, but it also depends on how it resonates with you. It's that saying, a picture says a thousand words. And especially in this case, because of how enriched 
the story is, it really can resonate with you on a multitude of different levels. And that is why I love Mushoku Tensei. There are so many different components to it. And I could make a whole 10 minute long rant about consequences when it comes to Rudy and people always being like, oh, well, why doesn't Rudy receive consequences for his bad behavior? Real life is not like that. It's not like, oh, you do a bad thing and you instantly receive a consequence from it. That's just not how it works. It's not a video, like, real life is not a video game. And and this anime tries to highlight that, that yeah, Rudy can make a mistake. And for example, sleeping with Roxy, and at the end of the day, did he get a consequence so much from it? No. I, I mean, in a sense, he kind of got a, a reward that he now has two wives. But you've also got to realize is that not everything has consequences and not everything has a reward either. Rudy could do good things, which he has, and he's received consequences in return. And see, this is the thing. This is how real life works. There are consequences and positives, or positives and negatives. There is always... Uh, situation there is always going to be something that follows after something and what I'm trying to highlight there is that you can do something negative or positive depending on the perspective and you may not necessarily get a consequence or reward based on what you're getting from that it just things fluctuate and that's what I want to kind of highlight there but Rudy does definitely receive some consequences for his bad behavior it does happen so to say that it never does I think is a disingenuous argument but it highlights that life is a roller coaster. There are many highs and there are many lows throughout the story. And I feel like I'm harping on the same story, but I again want to emphasize on that journey aspect and that realistic aspect of just how unpredictable things can be. And I feel like the writer made an amazing job. But also calling them an incel kind of demonstrates a lack of self-awareness from a lot of haters for Mushoku Tensei. I've seen that being thrown around, being like, oh, it's a self-insert kind of thing. No, I don't think it's a self-insert. I think it's simply just a story that the writer wanted to create and they knew it was going to be controversial. They knew it would upset some delicate flowers out there. And I think that's fine. I think these kind of stories need to exist to get people to discuss, to think, and it allows for some interesting debates and discussions out there. But I think censoring these kinds of animes is not going to help because all you're going to have is watered down Teletubby kid programs. And that's what these people want. But then they complain that everything's boring. So yeah, the end of the day, it is what it is. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I know this is a bit of a longer video, but I really wanted to talk about a couple of major key notes. If there's anything specific you want me to talk about, write it down in the comment sections in detail of kind of like a like a question kind of thing of what you want me to go over. I may write those down and I may make a future video on those discussions as well. Again, I do have the light novel reviews and the character analysis reviews, and I will be doing more character analysis videos as time goes on. As far as the light novel reviews go, I will be doing the sort of end game story volumes at some point so definitely stay tuned for those but the overarching full story has been fully reviewed so definitely check those videos out if you want to so again if you like this video hit the like subscribe and i'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video